Let's come together today to learn about the power of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believers. Abba Father, we offer this time into your hands. We ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit so that we may be able to learn and understand more about you and experience Jesus' love. Dear Holy Spirit, open our minds to grasp the knowledge of your truth. Baptize us with your fire and strengthen us with your power to do all things for the glory of God. Amen. If you've ever been on a team, you know that working together for a common goal can get people excited. There's a team spirit which sometimes can take over and bring people even closer together as they work towards this goal. Church is not a building or an organization. It's us believers coming together like a team, like Jesus' team. Our common goal is to help the world know Jesus, follow Jesus, and become children of God through Jesus. To equip us to achieve this goal, Jesus has given us His Spirit, Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is much greater than any team spirit. He's not just an effect of our enthusiasm of coming together, but He's the one who brings us together, energizes us, and gives us the gifts and fruits that are necessary to build the church. Let's answer some of these questions with the help of you, Kat. What role does the Holy Spirit play in the church? Holy Spirit provides assurance, joy, and charisms to the church. 2,000 years ago on Pentecost Day, Holy Spirit transformed fearful apostles to courageous witnesses of Christ. To this very day, Holy Spirit is the soul of the church. He is the essential principle of her life. Holy Spirit builds her and reminds her of her mission. He calls people into her service and sends them the necessary gifts. What are some of the titles we give to the Holy Spirit? Jesus Christ himself speaks of the Holy Spirit as a counselor, comforter, spirit of truth, teacher. And the first Christians experienced the Holy Spirit as a living water or a healing ointment, raging storm or a flaming fire. What place does the Holy Spirit have in the life of an individual believer? Holy Spirit makes me and you receptive to God. He teaches us to pray and helps us to be there for others. St. Augustine calls the Holy Spirit the quiet guest of our soul. So anyone who wants to sense his presence must be quiet. Often this guest speaks very softly in us, for instance, through our conscience or through internal or exterior promptings. Our body is God's living room and the more receptive we are to the Holy Spirit, the more he becomes master of our lives and gives us the necessary charisms for the upbuilding of the church. So what happens is instead of the works of the flesh, the fruits of the Spirit grow in us. So we read in Galatians 5, chapter 18 to 24. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I'm warning you as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let's look to the Holy Scriptures to see what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Genesis 1-2 The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Holy Spirit was the wind that swept over what was cold and dark and brought forth life. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Luke chapter 4 was 14 to 19. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of prophet Isaiah was given to him. 
He unrolled the scroll and found the place it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. Jesus Himself was filled with the Holy Spirit before He began any work for the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 1 verse 5 For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Jesus promised a new baptism with the fire of the Holy Spirit for His disciples. Then we see mere fishermen and tax collectors standing before kings, governors and rulers witnessing about Jesus' love on the cross and not being scared in the midst of persecution. When you read the Acts of the Apostles, you see how the Holy Spirit makes all the difference. You know, believers often think of praying to the Father and they might even picture themselves um, standing next to Jesus and Jesus praying for them. But the Holy Spirit, isn't He a dove? How does a dove fit into my spiritual life? The Holy Spirit is God Himself. He's not a dove. He's a person with a personality, likes and dislikes. In, in ancient times, pagan religions used to consider dove as a symbol of love. And so the early Christians immediately recognized why Holy Spirit, the symbol of God's love, came down as a dove when Jesus was baptized. While all three divine persons live within us by God's grace, we associate God's indwelling with the Holy Spirit in a special way. Why? Because He is the love between the Father and the Son in the Trinity. It would make sense that we would associate Him with God's love within our hearts and God's love in bringing people closer in His church. Now, if you're watching this video with someone, feel free to post the video and answer the following question. The Holy Spirit is involved with all the seven sacraments of the church, but with which sacrament do we especially associate His work? Now we look at the new challenge for today. Make a point to pray to the Holy Spirit every day of this week. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to be more aware of His presence. Read and understand the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now we can go through the gifts right now. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, fear of the Lord. Which of these gifts seem most essential in your life? This week, let's try and memorize the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Imagine a life where we have all these fruits and gifts. We would be unstoppable. As always, thank you for watching this video. Feel free to answer the reflection questions down in the description box and come and debate your thoughts and opinions. Stay tuned for the next topic where we talk about the Holy Catholic Church.